So I'm going to cut my hair and talk about Haruki Murakami's newest work, The Town and Its Uncertain Wall. Uh, so uh, one thing, you know, it's not translated into English yet. So you might be curious, but uh, one thing, you know, I can say about Haruki Murakami works is that his uh, prose can be read as in English as well as in Japanese. I mean, there's no essential difference. And it's actually one of the characteristics of Haruki Murakami's works that, uh, you know, it can be read in any language, probably. Uh, because, uh, probably because, uh, you know, in his debut uh, novel, he has a wind song or whatever, something like that. He actually started by writing in English. This is, I, I think, a famous episode of Haruki Murakami's creative life. Uh, you know, he actually starts by writing, he started by writing in English, and then uh, he stopped that in the middle, and I think that he then started to write it in Japanese all over again. So Haruki Murakami has translated works by Raymond Chandra, uh, and uh, he also translated uh, Ketchen the Rai. So, you know, he, he's a man who is well-versed in uh, English literature, especially American literature. So, you know, it's no wonder that Haruki Murakami's uh, writings reads well in English as well as in Japanese. So what I'm going to say is probably universal. I mean, it doesn't depend on the Japanese language or Japanese culture, indeed. So uh, the town and uh, its uncertain wall is uh, something that is um, uh, probably belong to the ca canon of Haruki Murakami's works. I mean, it deals with the problem of the growing pain of a man and love and you know the woman here is all uh, as as always uh, conceptualized. I mean you know there is something extraordinary about Haruki Murakami's work. I think you know whenever you read a Murakami work, you feel as if the concrete is very abstract and uh, the reality is um, you know connected to some remote almost platonic domains, and that is the joy of reading Haruki Murakami work. So, uh, it's boy meets girl, and, uh, you know, the girl is uh, somebody who is living, but at the same time, she's, she's a metaphor. I mean, she's a concept, and, you know, this is not an ordinary uh, love novel. I mean, it's something that belongs to uh, the abstract... Uh, you know, conceptual operations of mathematics, for example. So, you know, it's not really something that is based in the reality of things. Uh, you know, while reading The Town and Its Uncertain Wall, uh, I was constantly reminded of of James Joyce's Dubliners. And not because the Haruki Murakami writings and uh, James Joyce prose are similar, but because they are quite different. I mean, you know, when you read the Dubliners, uh, the reality is dealt with, and uh, in a really intricate and uh, complicated maze of uh, structure, uh, James Joyce somehow relates the everyday occurrence to the spiritual and the eternal and the conceptual in very, very implicit and cryptic ways. Now, uh, the crypt cryptography of Haruki Murakami's writings is quite different. Um, the metaphors are more straightforward. I think that's the, one of the reasons why Haruki Murakami's novels are so popular uh, compared to James Joyce's novels. Uh, James Joyce is not a popular novelist. I mean, he is respected, but uh, you know, he is not everyone's cup of tea. Um, you know, I have read uh, the Darwinus, but and I have read the a portrait of the artist as a young man, but uh, I haven't read uh, Feeling and Week, and I have I haven't read Ulysses. I, I mind you, I have tried to read it as many any bookworm would do. But I haven't been able to finish them. So, you know, there you are. Whereas I have finished every Haruki Murakami novel. Uh, this is something extraordinary. I mean, 
once you start reading, you can't you know, unfinish it. You can't not finish it. I mean, you cannot not finish it. I mean, you know, you, once you read, start reading Haruki Murakami novel, you finish it. That's an astonishing thing about uh, Haruki Murakami novels. I mean, because I think there's something brutally simple, if not simplistic, about the way Haruki Murakami uh, employs concepts, uh, metaphors, um, you know, and oh, I'm, I'm always enjoy reading uh, the food scene. I mean, when the protagonist of the novel cooks something, um, pasta, or oh, that's uh, kind of a, kind of a, you know, signature Haruki Murakami scene, isn't it? To boil the pasta. Um, in this novel, uh, the man meets a woman, and she he asks the woman to time uh, his uh, spaghetti boiling, and uh, the woman uh, is asked to measure eight minutes thirty seconds, not a second more or not a second less. Uh, this is a really a typical Haruki Murakami moment, isn't it? I mean, you know, if a man, a man asks a woman to time the boiling of the spaghetti and you know eight thirty eight minutes and thirty seconds to be exact and you know uh, um i think i'm all, all already done so yeah with my hair so i have cut my hair but this is not a metaphor i have cut my real hair it's in here uh in this uh plastic bag uh provided by the convenience store well, nowadays you have to purchase it in Japan out of considerations for the environment. But anyway, um, I'm a different person uh, from the moment um, I started recording this video. I have transfigured. So my hair is a metaphor. But so is every, many things in um, Haruki Murakami's uh, wonderful book, um, you know, The Town and Its Outside Worlds. So it uh, is a story about... Uh, a library? Actually, two libraries. Uh, maybe three libraries. And, uh, what, and, you know, the library is also a metaphor. Everything is a metaphor. Meeting with a girl is a metaphor. Uh, being unable to connect with her is a metaphor. The war is a metaphor. Everything is a metaphor. And interestingly, uh, Haruki Murakami uh, chose a remote town in Aizu uh, uh, district of Fukushima Prefecture. Fukushima is, of course, uh, the, uh, you know, where the you know, really tragic uh, nuclear accident happened after the great uh, Eastern Japan earthquake in 2011. So I think these locations are carefully chosen, as is always the case with uh, Haruki Murakami's writings. But, uh, you know, um, I think, you know, it's quite interesting that this is a work that the writer returned after almost 40 years of uh, gap. I mean, this is based on this novel, The Town and Its Uncertain Worlds, is uh, based on a short novel, an, an, an attempt at a short novel, uh, in a literary magazine back uh, 40 years ago, and the author or abandoned it, and he couldn't finish it. But uh, it's quite interesting what he says in the afterwards. Yes, this novel comes with an afterwards, which is very unusual in the Haruki Murakami novel, or indeed any novel. And he said that uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, he said that uh, he felt that he could probably start writing the novel again. And this is quite extraordinary coming from uh, well versed, uh, you know, long standing novelist of uh, uh, global fame. Um, in, and it's quite interesting. And so that s means that the metaphors and symbolisms dealt with in that novel are something that is very, very uh, intertwined with his own existence, you know, with the core of his existence. And um, it is quite interesting to, uh, you know, observe that. And also, there is a boy who reads novels 
on and on and on. Well, not only novels, many of uh, all the books in the world. And, you know, I, I thought that was a really wonderful metaphor for large language models. You know, we are all large language models, right? I mean, something like ChatGPT. And, you know, it is quite beautiful to keep reading and reading and reading. Uh, after, you know, reading uh, Haruki Murakami's, this novel, I mean, The Town and Its Uncertain Wars, I wanted to read books, you know, <laughs> I really wanted to read books as much as I can, because I'm a large language model, and I need data. <laughs> I need data. I want to devour as many books as possible. That was my urge. This was actually, I mean, so, I for me, the most charming uh, character in the novel, I think, was the boy, who reads on and on and on. And, uh, you know, um, I, I think it's a mature, well-versed novel, late, uh, a late Mirakam, Haruki Mirakami work. Uh, uh, I hope this isn't his last. There would be many, many uh, novels to come after this. But uh, if you have liked uh, Haruki Mirakami's works, uh, this is a whiskey that have matured well. You know, Japanese whiskey is nowadays very famous all over the world, and uh, it's uh, based on the balance of resonant elements aged over years. And this is a novel like a Japanese whiskey. Uh, it has the familiar uh, motifs, and it has the you know quite um, repeating themes of Haruki Murakami's novels. But uh, the elements are so well balanced in a wonderful nagomi of things and um in that a uh, cocktail of things um you will find something that you will quite enjoy reading uh uh you know in the many hours of your yeah, summer or autumn or winter depending on uh, what time of the year yeah, or you're listening to this rather strange video. By the way, I was I started this video by cutting my hair. Uh, I have done this uh, probably more than ten times I already in the, my Japanese YouTube video channel, and I have done this only once I think in this English uh, YouTube channel video. But I have been doing this, uh, you know, all the time over the last couple, uh, several years, and I enjoyed it really reading uh, uh, sorry speaking to you like this while i'm cutting my hair and of course uh in our uh, association with uh, uh haruki mirakami uh this is a reference to his novel or no sorry essay uh the thing i think about fire fire i run well, i don't know the exact title but that's the gist of it i mean haruki mirakami has a uh, essay uh on running and you know uh, uh, so this is something like uh, what I think of while I cut my hair. So that is a tribute to the great novelist Haruki Murakami. So I had the privilege of uh, speaking to Haruki Murakami once uh, in the Tokyo FM radio station. And I have a picture taken of me and Haruki Murakami. But I have, for, out of respect for the author, I haven't put it on the web. I have it somewhere here, uh, printed, but uh, that is one of the treasures of my life. So anyway, thank you for listening. And enjoy reading The Town and Its Uncertain Words. Until next time, while I cut my hair.